Hi, I'm Phil Shaw. I'm a director for international business development in Rotary and Mission Systems based in Washington, D.C. I grew up in a naval family. My father was uh, in the Royal Navy along with my uh, uncle on my mother's side. So I was very familiar with the Navy, but my real interest grew into aviation uh, when I was at school in the 70s when the Sea King entered service. So I guess my real interest in the Navy and in flying helicopters grew during the early 1980s uh, when I saw it all on TV in full glory during the Falklands War. British troops were landed by helicopter and were supported by a number of warships. The Sea King was the workhorse of the Royal Navy uh, when I started flying. I actually chose to go down the ASW helicopter route when I was going through training. Very early on in the life of the aircraft, we were in a point where we were forever upgrading it and looking towards a replacement, which is what Merlin was designed to do to come in and replace. I'm Rod McCoskey, Chief Engineer and Senior Vice President of Engineering and Technology at Lockheed Martin. I oversee a 40,000 person, highly skilled workforce, and I own the overall technical performance and technical strategy for Lockheed Martin. I worked the Merlin proposal back when we won the original contract for 44 ASW, ASUW helicopters in 1991 for the Mark I. The Merlin Mark I program was, at the time, the largest and most complex project for the UK Ministry of Defence, and the Lockheed Martin team successfully ran it. The program has often been referred to as a showcase program inside and outside of Lockheed Martin, with the system entering service in 1998. What a wonderful privilege to be asked to uh, be the first commanding officer of a Merlin squadron. It was a dream come true, if you like, for me to be a uh, CO of a squadron, but let alone to bring in and introduce a brand new aircraft. As a pilot, the aircraft is very simple to fly. We've got an uh, enormous number of systems working for us uh, in terms of autopilot, stabilization systems. Everything's at our fingertips in terms of controlling the aircraft systems and also the mission systems. Um, and it's a joy to fly. It's a lot simpler than some of the older helicopters that we have in service now. Not only did we have to ensure that we passed on how to fight the aircraft, but how to fly and train on the aircraft. So we were developing the tactics and we're also developing the training system at the same time. So that was a big responsibility for all of us and, and we had a great team uh, to make sure that that happened. And what sticks in my mind was the transparency of the program teams. The fact that uh, Lockheed developed a relationship with me as a squadron commander at the very pointed end of the spear. This success was a demonstration of true teamwork the U.S. and U.K. Lockheed Martin teams work together seamlessly, as well as having an integrated team with the acquisition customer and end user. Both were a large part of this achievement. The collaboration with Leonardo, Celis, Talis, CIE, and other key suppliers at the time was imperative to delivering these aircraft on time. It was truly a team effort. Firstly was the safety of the aircraft. We had three engines and hovering over the ocean in the middle of the night, middle of the Atlantic, let's say, can be quite a scary proposition for uh, if you're just sitting, hanging on two engines. So to have an extra one was wonderful. The level of integration for the pilots up front with navigation, the fact that you could see the tactical picture as well as all the flight controls and so on was a step change from the Sea King. That kind of capability was a huge step forward for the crew integration, the way we were able to contribute to any tactical scenario. And then, of course, the quantum change in capability of sensors. Again, everything was just a lot more efficient, a lot more capable than previous generation platforms. And so this was truly a quantum leap in capability from what we were used to. The Merlin Mark I was developed and integrated with acoustics, ESM, sonar homing, and radar, offering the UK a best-of-breed solution in ASW capabilities when it came into service in 1998. But in a time of rapidly progressing technology, the systems and mission demands evolve. 
The MCSP upgrade offered the MOD an updated system architecture, improvements to the mission systems, and new radar and sonar subsystems. Most recently is the last of the Sea King airborne surveillance and control equipped aircraft were reaching their out of service date. The capability needed to continue to provide the new Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers with airborne early warning capabilities. Three production Merlin aircraft with the ASAC roll equipment were readied for the inaugural deployment and along with six Merlin ASW Mark IIs set sail in April on Carrier Support Group 2021, the deployment to the Far East operating alongside F-35s from the UK and the USA. The selection of the Merlin Mark II as the base for Crow's Nest is again a testament to the capabilities of the platform. The fact that it truly is a multi-mission helicopter that can take on adjacent roles. The other benefit that Merlin has is it's a large aircraft, so true multi-role capability is there. Uh, we've got a fantastic long-range radar improved with MCSP uh, for anti-surface warfare. We've got space in the cabin for casualty evacuation, for troop transport. Uh, it's capable of anti-piracy ops, humanitarian missions and so on. So it truly is a multi-role capable platform, much more so than the earlier platforms that it replaced. I've had a great career in the Royal Navy and now a great career in Lockheed Martin, all thanks really to Merlin. So I, I hang my hat on that program. It's been uh, very good in all kinds of ways. If I had to use one word to describe Merlin for me, it would be pride. Merlin to me is a sense of accomplishment at being able to work with a world-class team to deliver such a capable platform to the MOD was a true success. Merlin turning 30 makes me feel, well, old. <laughs> It doesn't seem possible that the initial Merlin Mark I contract was really let that long ago. It makes me feel very proud of the fact that Merlin has withstood the test of time. The best part of the Merlin story to me is that the story is not over. Lockheed Martin continues to develop Merlin in line with customer requirements. We continue to improve the baseline helicopter and mission system that was introduced 30 years ago. And I have enormous sense of pride looking back on my time with uh, Merlin. I, I said you know, earlier it was a huge privilege for me. I, I was privileged to be on the program. I was privileged to be surrounded by uh, superstars, uh, both in the, in the Navy and uh, Lockheed Martin and also in the MOD at the time. I think it's testament to that team who put this program on the rails and enabled it to get 30 years down the track, which is where we are today. And what a wonderful news story that is, and hope there's another 30 years ahead of us.